Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at eliminating notes receivable and discounting notes receivable. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA exam FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you create one and please connect with me. LinkedIn is very important for your professional network ability and professional image. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and CPA related lectures. You want to make sure you subscribe. This way you will stay up to date. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram as I'm trying to increase my following. This is my Facebook page and this is my website. So let's talk about notes receivable discounted. Now let's talk about discounting notes receivable. What is the idea of notes receivable and how does it work? Well, let's assume a company make a sale make a sale to an outside party, and as a result, the other party promised to pay in the future plus interest. So for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna ignore the uh, principle, we're gonna ignore the interest components. So let's assume we make a sale, we debit notes receivable, let's make it $100,000, and we're gonna credit sales $100,000. So we made the sale, but the party did not have cash to pay us, so they signed a note. And for the sake of illustration, we're going to charge them 10%, and the note is due in 180 days. So that's the deal. We're going to charge you 10%, so you're going to pay us 100000 plus 10%. But that's 180 days from now. Now, let's assume this is the note. Let's assume just for the sake of looking at the picture, this is the note. So this is $100,000 right here. This is the $100,000. Now... Guess what? This $100,000 here, okay? It's a piece of paper, it's a note. We're waiting to get we waiting to get our money plus interest. But guess what? We really can't wait or we cannot afford to wait in a sense that we need the cash now. We need to make payroll. We need to pay our suppliers. We need to pay our debt. So what we do is we go to a factor, someone who's interested in buying the note. What does it mean by buying the note? The person that's buying the note will say something like this. We'll say, okay, I will buy your note. In other words, I will give you cash today. You want cash? I'll give you cash today. But here's the thing. I'm going to give you only this much. Only this much, I'm going to assume this is $5,000 off. So I will give you right now, I'll give you right now $95,000 cash. Now, Okay, then this factor will use an interest rate that they want to earn and they will discount the note and they will pay you 95,000. You get your cash now, they will have the note. Now their note is 100,000. So when they buy the note, the note's still 100,000. They only paid, the, paid me 95,000. So they can basically, they clipped 5,000 out. They didn't really clip it. The note's still 100,000, but they paid me less. So I gave them the note, I took $5,000 less, but I want my cash now. So this is basically the idea of discounting. Now I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm keeping the interest uh, computation out of the picture to keep it simple. Now bear in mind, if you want to learn about this topic, go to my advanced accounting, which is, uh, I'm sorry, go to my intermediate accounting course, and specifically chapter seven, I talk in details about notes receivable, how to factor notes receivable, how to discount notes receivable, so on and so forth. So this is an advanced accounting course. So the assumption is you have some idea about notes receivable. But here we are dealing with intercompany. So a company may issue a note to an affiliate company, then that affiliate company will discount the note to an outside party. So basically what, what we're saying is you have a parent company and you have a subsidiary. The parent company will issue a note to the subsidiary Okay, then the subsidiary will sell the note to a bank. So this is what we're going to be dealing with. Or, or uh, a company holding a note receivable from an outside party may discount the note to an affiliate. Now you have a note from an outside party. So you made a sale, you have a note, remember that $100,000 in the prior example. Now rather than discounting the note to an outside to an outside party, you discounted the note to an affiliate, to one of your sister companies or to your parent company, okay, to an affiliate. So that could be that could be the case as well. In either situation, when we consolidate, from a consolidation point of view, a receivable held by one of the affiliate companies should be reported in the consolidated balance sheet only if the note is due from an outside party. So remember, 
if I if if I discounted the note to you, well, that's not really a note receivable, right, for you because we're, we are related parties. I'll have a note payable, you have a note receivable. They're going to cancel each other out. So from a consolidated point point of view, we only have if we if if we it's only counted when we kind of not kind of when we when we discount it on outside party when we discount this to an outside party now the best way to illustrate this is to work an example to see how this all work so assume p company the parent company issued a one hundred thousand dollar note to its subsidiary s company for cash so what does that mean it means we needed cash we told s company give us one hundred thousand dollar cash so we debit cash one hundred thousand we credit note and this note is for s our subsidiary Pretty straightforward. S company will say, okay, now I have a notes receivable from P and I gave them 100,000. They will credit cash 100,000. Now just look at this, ignoring interest income and interest expense and interest revenue and interest expense. What happened is this, the P company and the S company, basically they canceled each other out. $100,000 debit, $100,000 credit. This is 100,000. Notes payable, notes receivable. Notice if, that, if that's all what happened, at the end of the at the end of the period they will cancel each other out now assume s company now assume s company discounted the note to a non-affiliate bank or to a non-affiliate party it doesn't have to be a bank it could be another company it could be another person so they discounted it before maturity discounted it means they took this note that they have from the parent company then they are going to sell it i just as i told you they want their cash they, they cannot wait for P company to pay them. They want to be paid now. So they look, they went to this bank and said, okay, let's do this. And let's assume for simplicity, the bank gave them $100,000. Just they will not do so just for the sake of illustration. So as company, there are two methods to recording this transaction. They can debit cash, credits, notes receivable. If that's the case, they're going to keep their life easy. Why? Because basically this note's receivable, cancel this note's receivable, this cash cancels this cash. And if there's any interest, any, any interest expense, any interest revenue, they would cancel each other, but we're keeping it simple. This is if they use this method. If they credited notes receivable. The other method, if they, they would credit rather than notes receivable, they would credit an account called, it's a contra receivable, notes receivable discounted 100,000. So if so, if they do this method, if they go with the second method, we have some additional entries to make. So if we use method one, the credit to notes receivable would cancel the debit made to the notes receivable when the note was received. As I told you, this note, this credit, and this debit, they will cancel each other out. And the consolidated balance sheet would appropriately report the $100,000 note held by the bank and still report it on the books of the P company. And the P company would still have the notes payable. So we are still showing that we owe the bank 100,000 because P company has a liability of 100,000. If there's any disclosure, we also have to put the disclosure. Okay, so if method one is used, it's pretty straightforward. If method two is used, and what I mean by method two is this is method two, method two. If method two is used, the notes receivable and the notes discounted would have to be eliminated. So why? Because if method two is used, so just kind of ignore this now because this doesn't exist anymore. Just want to show you in a picture. If method two is used, then what we have, we have a notes receivable and still on the books, a notes payable and credit to notes receivable. Notes, if notes receive, the notes receivable and the notes receivable discounted would have to be eliminated because the consolidated group is not con contingently liable for the note, but it's the primary maker of the note. So the, the, the consolidated group is the, is the maker of the note. They promise to pay it back because there's no difference between P and S when it comes to consolidation. Well, what do we have to do then? We have to remove the notes receivable discounted and we have to remove the notes receivable because we cannot keep the notes receivable on the books because we don't really have a notes receivable because that's that's coming from p company and we really have a loan a liability therefore we have to input this entry enter this entry to complete the elim elimination entries let's look at let's assume p company discount with s company a note that has originally received from one of its customers now p company have a note and that note is from a customer so let's assume p company made a sale to a customer for 100,000. So they will debit notes receivable from the customer 100,000. They will credit sales 100,000. Now they discounted this note to S company. Once again, they have two methods. They can either use, they can either use method one and method one. Basically, if we use method one, everything, our life is easy because the note is gone. Okay. So we, we have, we credit the notes and the note is gone. If we use method two, 
then what happened, we still have the notes receivable on the books. Okay? And let's take a look at the entry for the S company. S company, they will debit notes receivable and they will credit cash. So if we use method two, so ignore method one for now. If we use method two, we still have the notes receivable on the parent company books. Let me use a different color. We still have the notes receivable on the parent company books. And now we have an additional notes receivable on the subsidiary books. So basically we have two notes receivable one and two and that's not really true that's not really true what does that mean it means if we use method two we have to make an additional entry but let's assume that just no elimination entry is required if method if method one is used if method two is used both company would report the same notes receivable as an asset which is that's not true we don't have two assets we don't have two assets from a consolidation perspective we only have one asset and p company would have to show a contingent liability for a notes receivable discounted so they'll have to explain if there's any contingent liability when they discounted the note to an outside party in the consolidating working paper one notes receivable must be eliminated we cannot have two notes receivable okay along with the notes receivable discounted because because as company they discounted the note again they have notes receivable discounted okay so assume company assume s company discounted the note to an outside party again they have two methods they could use this method and if they use this method it's easy if they use the notes receivable discounted now we have two let me use a different color two notes receivable discounted two of them then we have to eliminate them simply put Simply put, we cannot have two notes receivable and two notes receivable discounted. So what happened is this. P had the note, and this is actually what happened. P transferred the note to S. P transferred the note to S. It's the same notes receivable. But if we don't if we don't use method, if we use method one, you know, this 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 note is gone, now it's appearing here. But if we use method two, then we have a note here and a note here. Then S discounted the note. Again, if when they discount the note, if they remove the note, then we have no problem because the note is gone. If we don't remove the note, then we have to do something. We have to eliminate the note and the notes receivable discounted. Okay. So remember, we have one note, but it, it went from P to S, then S discounted the note. Just be, bear in mind from a consolidated point of view, it's one company. P and S are one company, not two companies. If you have any questions about this topic, um, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Now for the CPA exam, it doesn't go that far, in my opinion anyway. On the CPA exam, what happened is this. What you need to know, basically, I, I should have talked about this earlier. Basically, on the CPA exam, this is as far as it goes. Basically, you have a note between two related parties, they might ask you to eliminate the, the note. And if there's any interest revenue or any interest expense, they would eliminate. So so this company, P company, will have an interest expense because they have to pay expense. Um, yeah, P company will have interest expense and they have to pay it to S revenue. S revenue will have interest revenue. And they, those two, they would cancel each other out. So this is as far as the CPA exam would go, in my opinion, if you know that much. But you want to know in case it was discounted to an outside party, and notes receivable discounted could be involved if they use this method it's just keep our life easy if they use notes receivable discounted then we have to eliminate the note because we did not eliminate the note when we discounted it again study hard for your exam and see you on the other side of success good luck